And my name is Duo Li, just uh, as introduced by Junqing, and I'm currently work as a research associate at the Information Engineering Division, and also at the Center for the Sustainable Road Freight. And so today I'm going to share some of my recent works about uh, the spatial temporal traffic prediction using deep learning. And my presentation mainly uh, contains three parts. So first, uh, I'll briefly introduce my previous works on the smart motorway traffic management and some data mining tasks. Uh, this part is less relevant to the today's topic, but I think it might be useful because there might be some, con some, some of you might be interested in some of these contents and topics, and uh, there might be some connections to your works as well, and maybe you can establish some collaborations on these topics. And the second part will be the spatial temporal traffic prediction, some background about this topic. And following this, I will uh, present our newly proposed uh, deep learning based tra traffic prediction method. So my previous works, the first part of my previous works is about uh, the smart motorway traffic management measures. And in this, in this research, I mainly used uh, some in intelligent transport system measures like run metering and the variable speed limits to improve the mobility, safety, and uh, environmental performance of motorway systems. And uh, we proposed uh, several coordinated uh, control strategies using the model predictive control and uh, type two and the uh, type two fuzzy logic. And, and uh, we tested our strategies against a bottleneck section uh, in Auckland, New Zealand. And the results show that our strategy can achieve shorter travel time, lower crash probability, and less fuel consumption and emissions. And also we proposed uh, some strategies to, in, to increase the uh, driver compliance to speed limits so as to avoid uh, the speeding. And also in addition, we propose the strategies to achieve a more equitable distribution of traffic delays. Like we try to balance the drivers at on ramps and the congested areas and controlled areas, which experience the longer delays and, and to with some some drivers that has less blades, so that's to achieve, so that to achieve a more equitable motorway system. And uh, the second part of my previous work is about a mixed uh, connected automated vehicle and uh, the manual driving vehicle traffic flow. As we all know, that replacing all the manual driving vehicles with connected and automated one will be a relatively long-term goal. And uh, in the near future, probably the most possible situation uh, is that uh, the connected automated vehicle will coexist with uh, manual driving vehicles. And uh, that is quite that is it's a quite complex and kind of dangerous situation. So we try to model and simulate such kind of mixed traffic flow. And uh, based on our simulation model, we also assessed uh, the impact of connected automated vehicles on the different uh, traffic conditions and the different uh, CA way penetration rates and we assessed uh, their impact on the safety, mobility, and uh, environmental performance. And uh, at last, we proposed uh, this, we call it infrastructure-free motorway system. And in such kind of system, we do not need any kind of detection and uh, control device, like the fixed uh, loop, like, uh, like, um, 
uh, now like, like, like nowadays we use uh, fixed loop detectors to collect to collect uh, traffic information and uh, we use uh, fixed uh, control measure control device like the variable message signs and uh, traffic signals to control the traffic flow but in this infrastructure free motorway system we obtain the traffic information solely based on the connected and automated vehicle trajectory data and we also imply the traffic the control actions to the traffic flow solely using the connected and automated vehicles. And uh, the third part of my pre previous work is about uh, the sharing back mining. And in this research, we mainly conducted uh, two, uh, two, two, two tasks. The first is the uh, clustering. We used uh, the the Gaussian mixture models to cluster the sharing back stations based on their, their, their sharing back usage and demand data. And then we tried to predict the future traffic demand using Markov chain model. And the last part of my work is about safety data mining. And in this research, we mainly emphasize on the most vulnerable traffic users like pedestrians, the passengers, elders, and the children. And we obtained our data from this STATS-19 database from the Department for Transport in UK. And uh, in this database that contains over 60 variables that are associated with personal injury accidents. Um, these variables can be uh, road uh, sur surface conditions, light conditions, people's movements and the location when the accident occurred, and uh, some other kind of variables. And uh, we and we employed this classification and the regression tree model and the random forest model to identify the most critical risk factors impacting the crash injury severity. Okay, that's pretty much all of the that's pretty much all of the my previous works. And if any of you are interested in some of these topics, and maybe you can have a chat short after. And, and here's uh, today's main topic, the spatial temporal traffic prediction. And as we all know that uh, the accurate traffic prediction plays a very important role in urban traffic and in our daily lives. It can benefit us from different uh, perspectives like it can help the road operators and the traffic engineers to effectively manage and control traffic so as to relieve the congestion or to avoid the daily recurring uh, traffic jams. And it can also help, help some private com companies to, better, to make better use of their resources like it can help pre-allocate taxis and uh, sharing bikes. And uh, in addition, it's, uh, it's also benefit to our daily life. And like when we plan our daily commutes, uh, we, can use, we can use this predict the traffic information from some navigation apps. And the last, and the last benefit is about public safety. Maybe a lot of people ignored this point because this is uh, less relevant between the public safety and uh, the traffic prediction. But uh, here I'll show you an example. Like in 2016, that uh, a lot of uh, many Pokemon Go players just uh, ran into the just just uh, ran into the New York City's Central Park in the hopes of catching a very rare digital monster. And uh, that co caused a very dangerous stampede. And if we can predict such kind of move, movement from multi, 
data sources like from the social media and from from the their their uh, traffic patterns and then we can avoid such kind of such kind of dangerous situation so as the traffic prediction is such important in in our daily life and in the urban traffic there are already many studies conducted to try to resolve to solve this problem and uh, as you know the most important part and also the fundamental part of the prediction is the data and uh, nowadays i think the available data for tra tra traffic prediction mainly lies in three three parts three types like the first like the first is a time series data type and this time series and the trajectories can be represented as a sequence and the next type is uh, spatial maps and this can be the graph or image like data or 2d matrix and if we represent these spatial maps or the spatial features in the XY coordinate system and uh, add uh, a timeline on it, so then it becomes to a 3D tensor. And that is the spatial temporal data. And it's also the, uh, the main data type for the spatial temporal prediction. And here I want, I want to to spend a few minutes to explain why this spatial temporal data is so important in traffic prediction. Because you know, uh, in some earlier studies, most uh, researchers mainly use some classic methods like the regression models, the ARIMA models, or camera filter to deal with the uh, time series or the temporal series, series data. And they try to predict uh, the traffic at uh, the individual area or individual regions. And they predict these traffic conditions separately without taking into account the spatial correlations between these areas. But many studies have found there's a very complex and strong spatial temporal correlations of urban traffic. <clears throat> like, the, like the example showed here, uh, during the morning peak hour, there's a very strong positive correlations between different business districts in the same city. And, this, and on the other hand, there's also a very strong negative correlations between the business district and the residence areas. So when we try to pre predict the tra uh, traffic, traffic situation at these areas, we, cannot, we, we should not take them at, as a, at each separate part. We should uh, take we should we should take them as a whole and uh, build uh, the space spatial relationship also the temporal relationship between them and in the context of the deep learning that uh, the i think the spatial temporal traffic prediction mainly contains two parts the first is is a spatial feature extraction and the next is a temporal feature extraction. And for the spatial feature extraction, people mean the most, of, most widely used method is this convolutional neural network. And this, this scene is, is, is particularly designed for the image-like data. Like, it, like, like the data that can be represented as regular grids in the Euclidean space. And the CNN takes the, takes the, uh, the whole image-like data as an input and, uh, try and break, it, break it into small pieces 
and use a convolutional layer to extract uh, the spatial features from each local regions and uh, then transit these features into the polling layer. And uh, here the downsampling is conducted and, uh, to, and uh, the number of parameters will be reduced. And then we got, we got some more general, general features from the CNN. But this, this traditional CNN also has some limitations, like it's only suitable for the image like data. So that means it can only be used in some kind of traffic prediction, like it can be used to predict the inflow and outflow traffic between different uh, grid like areas. But in the context of road, ne road network traffic prediction, it's, it's maybe it's not uh, that suitable. And for example, the, at the right, at the right, right, right figure that shows, that shows that example, uh, here the, here the carriageways are divided into different uh, small grades. But in this, but in this small grid, the traffic, the tra the road segments of the both directions are, are are included. But as you can see, that the road one and the road three has totally different traffic patterns. But uh, but still, they are they are grouped in the same grid. So that's probably not suitable, and which may lead to the overestimate or the underestimate. And one solution to this is probably to model the road network as a graph. Graph, like we can model each road segment as a node in a graph. And then we can use this graph CNN, that's an that's it's a uh, other kind of convolutional network neural networks that developed in recent years and and using this graph cn to do the convolutional operations on the graph like data and then for the temporal feature extraction and the predict prediction the most used uh, method I think is a recurrent neural, net, neural network and this recurrent neural network can recognize the sequential characteristics and then predict the next likely scenario and it also has different variants like the long short term memory. This long short term memory is still designed to overcome the limit uh, overcome the gra uh, gradients vanishing problem of the traditional RNN. And uh, to enhance the performance of RNN, and there's some more advanced techniques has been proposed, like the sequence to sequence attention mechanism and transformer. And all of these techniques can be combined with RN, original RNNs and to, to improve its performance. So here I summarized a very commonly used architecture for spatial temporal traffic prediction. Like uh, we can first collect the traffic information and other useful information from past time steps and then we use CNN or GCNN to extract the uh, spatial, spatial features from the image-like or graph-like data. And then we transit all of these captured spatial features to the RNN. And here uh, we will the RN will use the, to extract the temporal correlations and make the predictions. And the, then next, uh, all the output will transit to a full, fully connected layer. And uh, through this layer, all the, all the output will project to the final prediction vectors. 
and uh, this and uh, these structures can be model, mod modified like we can remove the RN network neural networks and just use the CNs and get get the aggregation of all of these spatial features to make a prediction or we can remove or add um, add a more fully connect connected layers and also we can add some some uh, some some more advanced techniques like like attention mechanism or sequence to sequence and uh, to enhance the performance of this architecture. And our recent works also based on the on this base this basic architecture and uh, and uh, and uh, on the basis of this architecture we we proposed uh, uh, we proposed the deep learning based uh, traffic prediction method method that is called attention based uh, spatial temporal graph attention network and this and uh, this model it uh, consists of the multi head JAT blocks for special for spatial correlation extraction and uh, the component fusion block for for combining different features from different uh, sources like the traffic detectors and uh, the weather station and some other data sources and uh, then we designed uh, a attention based uh, LSTM block for temporal feature learning as well as uh, prediction so in our study, we first construct a road network as a graph. And here we use each road segment represent a node in the road paragraph. And then we use the connectivity rather than the geographical distance to compute the adjunctancy matrix so here I want to explain why we use this connectivity rather than the ge geometrical, geometrical distance to calculate uh, the uh, adjunction uh, adjuncency matrix. Cause as you, you, as you can see at uh, the left, uh, at the left figure, if in the most previous studies, they use the geometric Geometric geometrical distance to to describe the spatial relations between different uh, neighbor neighbor nodes, but but uh, but you see in this figure uh, the road segment one and the road segment three are located at the opposite directions of the same motorway section, but although they are very close in terms of geographical distance, but their traffic pattern is totally different. So instead, we use the connectivity to, rep, to describe the spatial relationships between connected, connected uh, nodes. And, in, and in, in you, by using this connect, connectivity, we just uh, consider the uh, the just to consider the nodes that are reachable to the central nodes and uh, and uh, take out all the uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the road segments and then we formulate our problem as given the traffic volume speed and uh, weather information of each node in the past steps to predict uh, the future speed of each node. Uh, the reason why, why we just uh, try to predict uh, the, traf uh, the future traffic speed because that uh, this, speed, this speed can lately convert it to the travel time and other useful measures. So that's, that's the most information for us. And for the spatial correlation extraction, we designed this multi-head JAT block. And in this block, we use the attention mechanism to learn the 
relative weights between different uh, connected uh, road segments and uh, then to enhance the uh, model capacity and uh, to stabilize the learning process we also adapt uh, the multi-head uh, mechanism and after we extract all the spatial spatial features we translate all of these features to to the information fusion block. Here we apply a gating mechanism to combine the traffic volume, speed, and the weather information all together. And then the output of this block will be used for the next temporal correlation shape extraction block. And here for the temporal correlation extraction and the prediction block, we designed a we designed a we call it attention based LSTM block. And here uh, we use the two LSTM to respectfully model the short term and the long term dependencies of the historical data. Here, where we employ the two LSTM, uh, because we we observed that uh, just uh, using some reason, some information from the recent time steps, like one hour or two hour before, is not efficient for uh, effective traffic prediction. So we think we probably need to take into account the longer and the long term tra traffic information like this showed in this showed in this figure, the left figure uh, that the traffic patterns varies day by day and varies week by week so it's reasonable to take not just the recent time steps but also the information from few days ago and a few weeks ago so that make so that can make a more robust uh, traffic prediction and, uh, and so here we use a long-term LSTM to extract uh, the long-term long -term traffic information feature and use a short-term LSTM to extract uh, the traffic, traffic features from the recent time steps. And uh, to combine these two parts together, we again use an attention-based mechanism. And this mechanism is used to decide the importance of different time steps, like the, uh, like, like the, more, like the time steps that, uh, com that contributes, that's more significant, significant to the prediction results will give higher weight with factors. And in this way, we can we can take into account the longer sequence. And at last, we we verified our method against a network around Cambridge with a total of six sixty segments, and that's that's around fifty miles long for each direction. And we collect the traffic speed and the vol volume information for each road segment at 15 minutes interval from Highways England database. And we also obtain the weather data from the weather state of the weather station of the digital techni technology group in Cambridge University that containing the wind speed and uh, rainfall information at the 30 minutes interval. And uh, we compared our proposed uh, methods with some classic methods like historical average and ARIMA model. And we also compared uh, our methods with some state-of-the-art methods like the DCRN and STGCN. And uh, the results showed that our model can outperform all of the tested measures. And uh, in 15 minutes, 13 minutes, and 45 minutes ahead prediction. OK, so that's all of the contents of my presentation. And thank you very much for your patience and time.
and uh, please feel free to raise any questions you like. Thank you.